Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. I am here today because I thought it would be interesting at the end of this year to take a look at book hauls, not individually, not like a book haul revisit, but look at the number of books that I've hauled this year and compare that to some of my reading stats for this year to see how many books I've brought into my library compared to how many books I've read and some things like that. And I've already crunched the numbers. I have them in front of me and I can tell you it's not going to be great. But for me, I feel like this is going to be instructive I've never really done anything like this with my year-end numbers, and I feel like it's going to hopefully, hopefully, hopefully help me in the future think about how much money I spend on books, what type of book I should spend money on, and things like that. And the reason I say hopefully with such emphasis is that I am still having a learning process from my book haul revisits. That allure of buying a new book, having something new and shiny and that people are talking about in the house is really powerful. Anybody who loves books knows exactly what I'm talking about. It, there's always something new and exciting and that you genuinely think you might get around to, to reading in the calendar year. So it's very hard to resist those things. And since joining BookTube, all of that has really just gotten exaggerated even more because it's always always a challenge to have things to talk about when you have a channel and you need to think about such things and have things ready to go. In my first year on BookTube in particular, I, I purchased way too many books. I did better that last year. I thought I was doing better this year. Let's kind of dive into the numbers. So I went back to every single book haul that I have done in 2021. I have not done my book haul for December yet. I do have some books that are put aside for my December book haul, but I am not going to include them here because I feel like it's a little bit not fair. It's a, even a little bit not fair to include books from my November book haul because there's been a small window of time in which I could have read those books. So I'm not gonna include December. I will include November because there is a window, but December, anything I purchased this month, I feel like I don't wanna hold myself accountable for whether or not I have read it yet because it just got here but I will include November so from January through November I purchased 96 books that's a lot I mean I knew it was kind of going to be a lot but knowing that it's going to cross 100 with the books for December is kind of staggering now how many books have I read in 2021 I currently stand at 65 by the end of the year, I will hit at least 68 because there are three books that I need to finish by the end of the year in order to meet my reading challenge for Montana Book Company. And I'll put my video where I talk about how I met that challenge or am going to meet that challenge in the description box down below if you would like to check that out. So 65 books, likely going to be 68 by the end, but I purchased 96. I purchased way more books than I read in the calendar year. And... You can imagine that's not really great. <laughs> so that's certainly something that I'm going to have to think about as I go into next year. I would love to say that I'm going to scale back my book hauls, but I know there are books that are going to come up. I think I'm just going to try to be a lot more intentional about the books that I purchase and what I might wait on. I have a policy with Libro. I won't cash in a credit or make a purchase on Libro until I am ready to read that book. Otherwise, I'll just keep it on my wish list. And then when I'm ready for it, I'll cash it in or make that purchase and download it. And I feel like I might need to apply that to the rest of my life outside of Libro. It's easy to do it on Libro because there's an app <laughs> and a wish list that can save all of that information for you. So you could just kind of scroll through and get it when you're ready. But I, I need to apply that thinking to the regular world as well. Now, the next crucial bit of information here. So I purchased 96 books so far. How many of those have I read? 26, which is not great, but I did some math and that's about 25%. So 25%, it's not bad, but it's also not great. And I think that really just goes to show exactly what I just said. I feel like I, I will need to be a little bit more intentional, maybe 
hold off on purchasing some new exciting things until I am actually going to read them. Because the other thing that's happening right now is I don't have a whole lot of space on my bookshelves. And I have a pile of, of books that's that are waiting for a home. So I'm going to have to spend some time this holiday season just going through and pulling books that I might want to get rid of so I can fit those in. But if I keep purchasing, this is just going to keep happening. So that's my thinking. I just need to be a little bit more intentional. Now, I thought it was interesting as well to look at the books that I did read that were hauled and see how many of them I ended up reading on audio or listening to on audio as it would be. I admit, I thought this number was going to be a lot higher because I, the majority of the books that I read anymore are done through audio. So I assumed that the number of books I ended up listening to on audio was going to be higher. It was only seven. So that's not too bad. But I think I definitely need to think about audio as a way of do, getting all of these books in. And because audio is a preferred format, I think I'm going to try to lean into Libro. Because one thing is I really love supporting independent bookstores. And Montana Book Company is my favorite. So I can use Libro to continue to support them. So that's something I'm going to try to lean into as well in the new year. I also wanted to go through that number of books that I hauled. Again, it's 96. And see how many of the books that I purchased are what I like to call library builders. Now, when I say library builder, what I mean is something that I want to have in my library, but either I don't intend to get to it immediately or even anytime soon, but I want to have it on my shelf. So whenever I'm in the mood, I can get around to it and it will be there for me, ready to go. These are also books that I am unlikely to find at my library or anything like that. Classic example, one of the books that I hauled in January was Born to be Posthumous, The Eccentric Life and Mysterious Genius of Edward Gorey by Mark Derry. That book came out years ago. It never came out in paperback. My library has never gotten a copy. It's not available on Scribd. It's not available on Libby. So at this point, I feel like I could wait around for that book forever. Now, I hauled it in January. I haven't gotten around to reading it, but that's fine. Because the main thing for me was just that I wanted to have a copy of the book for whenever I am in the mood to read it or ready to read it, anything like that. So that is a classic example of the, this type of library builder. The other example is a book that I have already read but want to bring into my library for whatever reason. The Sue Grafton books that I have hauled over the last two years are examples of this. So I, if, if you follow along, you're familiar with the story. but. Bear with me for a second while I explain for anybody who's not familiar. I was reading my way through the Sue Grafton books. I got all the way to P is for Peril, and then Sue Grafton died. For whatever reason, I went back to the beginning and have been working my way through instead of just finishing and then circling back. But I had gotten rid of all of my copies of Sue Grafton books, figuring that they were taking up a lot of space on my shelves. And if I was going to reread them, I could probably just do it as an ebook and then I stopped reading ebooks. People always ask, why did you stop reading ebooks when I mentioned that? For the most part, I think it has to do with the fact that I'm staring at screens all day and I just don't like staring at like a phone screen or an e reader screen. And part of it is also that I really just wanted to get away from Kindle and I haven't picked up any other ebook format in, as a replacement. I, but I, I don't want to support Kindle, I don't want to support Amazon. So that was another reason I got away from ebooks, but now I just don't like it. I much prefer having a physical book in front of me or listening on audio. Point just being, I don't do ebooks anymore, so I wanted to bring all of the Sue Grafton books back, but I've already read them. So to me, I'm counting them as library builders because I've already read them. I don't have any intention to get to them like immediately. I just kind of want to have them there. Another example of this would be Overground Railroad, which I purchased when we were in Colorado on our independent bookstore tour. They had a copy of it at uh, Tattered Cover. I think the Colfax location was the one that had it. It was a book that I read last year and loved. If you haven't read Overground Railroad, it's a fantastic book. I highly recommend it. And I had always wanted to see a copy of the book because I knew it had a lot of photos and things like that in it. And when I saw the book, I wanted to have it in my library. It was just worth that purchase. 
And in fact, I, I ended up loaning it to my mother-in-law who has it right now. And uh, she listened to it on audio, but followed along in the book because of all of the supplemental material and the photographs that are in it. So to me, that is a perfect example of another li type of library builder where I already read the book, but I want to support the author. I want to support the publisher for getting that out there. And it's just a really beautiful, well thought out copy of a book. So that is another example of a library builder for me. I think that covers every kind of library builder that I, I have in my head. Uh, so there were 21, basically. 21 out of those 96 books was a library builder. I didn't intend to get to it right away. So if we take 21 books out of 96, let me do math in my head real quick. That's always a dangerous thing. Uh, that leaves 75. 75 books, that's still a lot. But then let's take away the ones that I've read, which are 26. And that would take us down. So 25 from 75 would be 50. So one more, 49. That leaves 49 books that I were not library builders that I did not get around to reading. And that's not as bad when you think about it that way, but it's, it's still 49 books. <laughs> so we've took it a good, we've taken a good chunk of books out of the ones that I've hauled. Uh, because I either read them or didn't intend to get to them right away, but that still leaves 49 that I didn't get to, and that's it's not small change, let's say that, because 49 books on your bookshelf, it takes up a lot of space. So again, I think I'm just going to have to be really intentional about what I purchase, when I purchase it, in 2022. I have not really thought about creating guidelines or restrictions on myself. I know a lot of people have done that. Uh, Doris has a system where I think, if I remember correctly, she um, can't haul more books than she reads in a given month. And of course, being Doris, there are all kinds of ways to game the system. But I, I don't want to do that to myself <laughs> because I, I, I don't know. Anytime, it's like with my reading goals. I feel like I will take a simple thing and make it really, really complicated and certainly more complicated than it needs to be. So I don't want to do that to myself. And I know a lot of people will also put restrictions on themselves where they won't buy new books for a certain amount of time. But you, yeah, I mean, you don't necessarily know what's going to come out and grab your interest or what's going to be like suddenly win an award or somebody's going to recommend something to you and it might not be available at your library and all of that stuff. So I don't want to put that kind of a restriction on myself. I'm going to think about it give it a noodle over the holidays and we'll see if there's any kind of way of thinking about that or putting some kind of actionable plan into effect. But I think right now I'm going to say I just really wanted to do this as an exercise. One, because I thought it was interesting. Hopefully you find it's interesting. But to give myself a further kick to be more intentional about what I bring into my library. The book haul revisits have been helpful, but I think this kind of end of year look at the oh, the big picture, hopefully will give me that perspective I need to really, 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 really uh, give it some thought and uh, put that into actual lessons that I can that I will follow through on because it's I've, I've still been purchasing a lot of books even though I've been doing book haul revisits and I will continue to do book haul revisits. It's going to be a little tricky because starting in March I'll have three years of book hauls to revisit. So I may think about the structure or format of my book haul revisits but I do intend to continue doing them in 2022. So if you want to be brave and tell me how many books you purchased in 2021 compared to how many books that you've read, let me know in the comment section down below. If you are a uh, booktuber and you would like to do this video, um, feel free to take the idea and uh, run with it. And if you have advice, I can't promise I'll listen and uh, take on whatever project you give me uh, to help myself curb my spending on books in 2022. But feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. Anything is appreciated and will be considered. I can promise you at least that much. So I'm going to leave it at that. And I would, again, love your feedback down below. I thank you for your time. It is really, really deeply appreciated. As always, we're coming to the end of another year. Uh, I, the end of the year is always when I hit a booktube anniversary. And I'm, so I'm thinking about this 
in particular a lot more right now, uh, but I really appreciate anybody who takes the time to follow these videos, comment on these videos, subscribe, any of that stuff. So I, I, I just want to take a second to let you know it really does mean a lot to me, and I am looking forward to another year. Hopefully some lessons learned, and I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.